Welcome to Miracles in the Book of Acts with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our topic today is Confusion to Clarity. In last week's program, we learned how Barnabas and Paul released powerful signs and wonders as they preached the gospel in Turkey. After leaving Paphos, they sailed to Perga and then traveled to Pisidian, Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, Derbe, sharing the good news about Jesus and healing people everywhere they went. They returned to Attalia and then sailed back to Syria, Antioch, to their home church. Luke says, when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles, Acts chapter 14 and verse 27. It did not take long for the news of the success of this first journey of Paul and Barnabas to come to the attention of the religious leaders in Jerusalem. And soon a delegation from Jerusalem arrived in Syrian Antioch, insisting that Gentile followers of Jesus needed to obey the Jewish laws. And whenever there's a great move of God, it's not unusual for some people to become confused. Some will say, this is not of God, while others will insist, yes, what is happening is the work of God. The church at Antioch decided to send Paul and Barnabas and several other key leaders to Jerusalem to meet with them and address the confusion that some people were feeling. On their journey south, Paul and Barnabas passed through Phoenicia and Samaria. And Luke says, describing in detail the conversions of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers, Acts chapter 15 and verse 3. What a blessing it must have been to hear about all the miracles that Paul and Barnabas had seen. We know about the man who had never walked. He got up and he walked, but there were many other miracles that happened that we don't even know about them. We'll never know till we get to heaven. Eventually, Paul and Barnabas completed the 300-mile journey back to Jerusalem. And in Acts chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, we read, When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done through them. By this time, the apostle Peter had also returned to Jerusalem and was was one of the first persons to speak in this meeting. You see, he knew what it was like to experience spiritual confusion. God had given Peter a vision of unclean animals, to help him understand that change was coming. And Peter reminded everyone how God used him in Cornelius' home to preach the gospel of Jesus to the Gentiles. Peter said, Brothers, you know in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us and made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Acts chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. Now, after Peter finished speaking, all the assembly fell silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul, as they related the signs and wonders that had been done through them amongst the Gentiles. Acts chapter 15 and verse 12. This is exactly how the message of Jesus spreads rapidly among people who have never heard his name. When people are healed, they want to know by whose power they have been healed. When people are drawn to God by the power of Jesus to heal and to forgive. And now it was time for James, the brother of Jesus, who was the leader of the church in Jerusalem, to speak. And James ruled that the Gentile followers of Jesus must not be required to follow the Jewish laws. He said that salvation is a free gift given by God that requires no human work to be earned. What good news that is. Rest, enjoy salvation in Jesus without works. This was the most important decision made by the first century church. 
The door was now truly open for everyone to receive Jesus as their Savior and the gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of them. The leaders in Jerusalem put their decision in writing and chose men to travel with Paul and Barnabas to witness what they had decided. <clears throat> Luke describes Judas and Silas as leading men of the church in Jerusalem with a prophetic gifting. What better way for the next move of God to be announced than by prophetic men? Prophet Amos says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophet. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. The church at Antioch was delighted to receive these men and the news that they brought. A new era had been released, and soon Paul and Barnabas were ready to take another trip and spread the message of Jesus to people who had never heard about him. Now, one thing that scholars love about the Bible is that the flaws in the character of the key leaders are not hidden. These flaws are there for all of us to see plainly. This tells us we don't need to be perfect to be used by God. God is not looking for the most gifted people. He's looking for the most willing and available people to help him. And so now there's even more confusion about who Paul and Barnabas will take with them on their next journey. A disagreement between Paul and Barnabas made it impossible for them to continue working at this particular moment in the history of the church. But as a result, two teams were sent in two different directions, and the message of Jesus spread even more rapidly. In my travels around the world, it's clear to me that powerful leaders need to form multiple teams rather than all try to work together on one team. In this case, Barnabas chose Mark and returned to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and visited the churches that had been planted in Turkey. This is actually the model Jesus established during his earthly ministry. He did not send all 12 of the disciples out together. He paired them up into six groups of two people, and Jesus spread his message by multiplication rather than by addition. He did this with the 70 disciples as well, sending them out two by two. So Barnabas and John Mark traveled to Cyprus and presumably on to North Africa, in particular to Cyrene, where the men had come from in the church at Antioch. Paul and Silas traveled by land to the churches in Syria and Cilicia, before crossing the Anatolian Plateau all the way to the town of Troas. Along the way, Timothy was added to the team at Lystra. And as Paul and his team moved, they faced more confusion as exactly where they should go. Following their visit with the believers who lived in Pisidian, they didn't know which way to go. And there are many lessons to gain from their experience. From Pisidian Antioch, Paul wanted to go to Ephesus. In a section called Asia Minor, Luke writes, Paul and his companions traveled throughout Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak a word in Asia, a very unusual text of Scripture, Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. And Paul decided he should try to go to Bithynia. And when they had come to Mycenae, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to. Acts chapter 16 and verse 7, another confusing text. What can we learn from their experience? It's simply this. When we are confused, God is not confused. And confusion is a process that God uses to help us discover his plans for us. Most ministries go through periods of confusion at one point or another. And God is looking for people he can trust to walk in confusion until he is ready to reveal his will for the next step in our life. Paul and his team finally reached Troas, modern-day Delian in Turkey, after walking almost a 1,000 miles. What an epic journey. But the Holy Spirit was guiding them every step of the way. And Holy Spirit wishes to be your guide throughout life as well. 
That night that they arrived in Troas, Paul received a vision about what to do next. Acts chapter 9, 16 and verse 9 says, Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. If you're confused about what to do next, ask God to give you a very specific vision. In the vision, Paul was able to recognize that the man was from the province of Macedonia in Greece, and he was calling Paul to help him. What a powerful vision. Paul had a clear picture in his mind of someone who needs to hear the message of Jesus. When I teach on this subject overseas, I always invite participants in my class to ask God to show them someone that he wants them to minister. As I share this idea with you, someone has just had a picture in their mind of a person who was lost and needs to hear the message of salvation. Ask God to bring you to that person. Ask God to show you where to look for that person. And when he tells you where to look, go there, and God will bring that person to you. Luke says, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready and at once left for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Acts chapter 16, verse 10. The next day, Paul and his team set sail for Neapolis, the port of Philippi. It will take them three days to sail there. And in Philippi, Paul and his team will experience more miracles. We'll learn about these in next week's episode. But if you're having some tension putting together a team that you're leading right now, keep this story in mind. Paul and Barnabas looked like they belonged together. But from God's point of view, there was more they could do apart than they could do by being together. Trust God as he prepares you and your team to do a great work for God that he wants you to lead. Ask God to give you a vision that will make the path clear and plain that he wants you to take. Trust God to bring you the right people at the right time for the next assignment he has put in your hands to do. We need to be in the right town at the right time with the right team and the right training. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Paul wrote these words out of his own confusion, his own experience facing confusion. When we are confused, God is not confused and has a plan for us to see clearly what he wants us to do. Now, there's a difference between confusion and the spirit of confusion. I break off any spirits of confusion operating in your life and ministry right now. I fill you with the spirit of God to face confusing circumstances until God is ready to reveal to you the next step that he wants you to take. Walk in supernatural power and peace while you wait on God for his next move. If you're lame, like some of the people in this story were, we just speak to your lameness right now. Ankles be strengthened right now in the name of Jesus. Leg muscles work. Cartilage be restored. Get up right now and walk in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through this message into your life right now. Next week, we'll continue studying miracles in the book of Acts. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God 
God bless you and fill you with living hope.